today we are going to see about the most famous Wright brothers. Whenever a question is asked, who invented the aircraft? Most of us uh, tend to answer that Wright brothers invented the aircraft. In one sense, it is true as well as it's false also, because uh, if we say that the aircraft is something that flies in the air, then the Wright brothers were not the first one to do that. Before Wright brothers, many of them, uh, which includes that famous Otto Lilienthal, then Octave Chanute, all of them had made beautiful gliders and had made several flights in them. But still, the name aircraft and the Wright brothers is almost a combination. Whenever anything is said about the aircraft, everybody remembers the Wright brothers. So what is so special about them? What impact they had made? I am going to tell you something about them. It's a very inspiring story. The Wright brothers, when they were in their school days, were very much impressed by a sort of the helicopter toy. A toy which had a small propeller on the top and when you spin it, it would ascend up in the air. Such type of the toys uh, were getting sold in most of the fests and they were the star attraction for the children in those days. They were very much impressed thinking that with such type of the contraption, it should be possible to fly up in the air and right from the boyhood, they started thinking in that direction. They could construct the beautiful kites, the different variety of the kites and later on, they also started manufacturing the kites and sailing them with the different designs and with the different colors and different capabilities of flying and they were quite expert in that. This duo of rights was quite industrious because in those days, they had been maintaining a printing press also. Today you might fi uh, feel that the printing is not very special. Anybody anywhere can do any printing. Even in our house, we have got the lesser printers, the inkjet printers and all. But think of the times when none such uh, machinery was available. At that time, the printing was really not only a novelty, but also a very complex type of the activity. And the Wright brothers were doing the printing also. They used to print the ledgers and the different type of the books for the neighboring shopkeepers and were earning quite well in that business. Later on, they started the business of bicycle making. <laughs> well, you may wonder what is so much in bicycle making. But now you are thinking in the modern terms where everything is mass manufactured in the large factories. That was not the time when the factories were there. The bicycles were made to order just like you make your clothes and your outfits by going to the tailor's shop and telling him what color you like, what type of the measurements you want, what style you want. So every bicycle was getting made to order. And you have a complete liberty in telling. If you want the front wheel larger and the rear wheel smaller, you could tell that. If you want the gear ratio of the paddling different, you could tell that. And the bicycle designer would design a bicycle for you. Bicycle was a very prestigious thing in those days. Just like the having a Mercedes in your garage is a point of prestige, in those days, Maintaining a bicycle was a point of prestige, only the rich people could afford it. So, in that business also, the Wright brothers had amassed quite a lot of sum. One book describes them that uh, when they started their serious experimentation with uh, the making of the aircraft, they had been fabulously rich. The term used in that book is fabulously rich, that means really very very rich. A lot of money they had when they started with experimenting on the real scale aircraft. The story of their uh, aircraft making is just a story of failures. You will be surprised, it is a complete story of failures. Octave Chenute was a person who had successfully made the gliders and he was getting old. 
The Wright brothers came into contact with him, of course not in person but by post. In fact, Wright brothers were writing to everybody in the world, whoever made any type of the aircraft, every line that was getting printed, the Wright brothers were um, uh, reading those, finding all those documents and collecting them. In a letter written to Octave Chanute, the Wright brothers had mentioned that what we feel from all the failures is that the man needs more skill rather than machinery. The meaning is that they were understanding at that time also that a lot of technology is available but the skill of flying is not really acquired by the man as yet and that is why they were keen on acquiring that skill. In 1890, they actually started the experimenting of uh, the large scale aircraft and their method was something because in America at that time not much uh, of the efforts were made uh, regarding the flying. The main center of all such experimentation was Europe and in Europe also the Britain, Germany, France, Netherlands and Turkestan all these were making a lot of experimentation on these. So, Wright brothers used to travel to Europe, visit all the people, collect as much as the latest material that they could find there and get back to America after about 4 months or so and then in the remaining 7 or 8 months they used to do the experimenting with uh, the different type of the designs and attempting to fly. You can imagine how much money they must be spending on this because they were travelling to Europe staying there for more than four months and then getting back to America every year. What was the result? They tried several designs. They tried the different type of the materials. They tried the different type of the logics and techniques and the result was only one. The failure and the failure and the failure. Not once they could do a real successful flight in the glider Except for a few flights in a glider they could make, but they also were not very impressive. This complete work started and continued, started in 1890, continued for almost 11 years. That means by 1900, this was going on. 11 years of the constant failures and their uh, money was exhausting, their larder was getting empty. And finally, it really did get empty. They realized that to be able to fly in the air with the power of a machine is not a simple thing. A lot of data is required. A lot of calculations are required. And unless such calculations or at least the method of calculation is available, it will not be possible to build the correct type of the aircraft. It is just impossible to stumble upon the correct combination accidentally and that is why they decided to take up the study but in those days nothing was known even the term aerodynamics was not known to anybody and as a result of that uh, they decided that okay we will find out what they did was a beautiful thing and something very unique which nobody else had done in the world that was the wind box they constructed a large rectangular oblong box with the viewing windows covered the windows with the glass and then made an arrangement to mount the small model of the aircraft inside. On one side there was a fan which could push the air in this box so they called this box as the wind box and by controlling the speed of the fan they could let the different velocity air in the box. Now in this velocity, different velocities, the models made by the sticks and paper because that was their expertise. They were the excellent kite makers and the kites are made of paper and sticks. So they use that skill for making the models of the aircraft as well. And these different modeled aircraft were tested in that wind tunnel and they started jotting down the area of the wing, the weight of the aircraft, the area of the stabilizer and the air speed at which a certain weight will be lifted. 
the way they went on writing these tables something start getting visible because when you do not have the facts and figures you can never imagine but once you jot down all the facts and figures they start showing some relationship and as a result of that they could do the primary calculation the meaning is that that if you want to fly up in the air with so much of the weight of the man so much of the weight of the structure then so much of the wing area would be required so such type of the first aerodynamic calculation and the simple formula for that were developed by the Wright brothers and in my opinion that is the most important contribution of the Wright brothers that when no science existed no mathematics existed to do any calculation about the aircraft they developed the first mathematics of the aircraft they developed the first science of the aircraft which later on was getting called as the aerodynamic science so all these things were started by Wright brothers and that also by experimenting in a simple wooden box making use of the tiny models so this is the way everything started and that is why I feel that the Wright brothers are the pioneers of aero modeling as well because they made the models of the aircraft and the same calculation same formulae and that logic helped them in making the first wonderful aircraft now what happened is that a competition was going on in Europe the people were much advanced and they were regularly flying the gliders but nobody till then was able to fly the aircraft with a power it is called as a powered flight now what is the meaning of a powered flight the powered flight is one where you will take off with the power of an engine you will cruise through the air with the power of the engine and you will land down with the engine turned on that means you should not switch off the engine and get to the ground you have to land perfectly without switching off the engine so any person in the world who would do all these three things the take off cruise and landing with the power of some engine then it will be called as the powered flight and many people were trying for the powered flight because the gliders were the excellent flyers but they were very much dependent on the weather conditions so if you want to get rid of the weather conditions and want a real freedom then you must have your power your own power and that power could be provided by the engines only number of people were trying in that direction but the engines they were using for flying were all the automobile engines and the automobile engines were really very bulky in size very heavy so the weight of the engine plus the fuel to be taken up plus at least one pilot and the weight of the whole structure of the aircraft used to become so large that it was impossible for such type of the aircraft to take off from the ground and Wright brothers decided that they would start the experimenting in this direction they applied their formulae in calculation and then they came across the first solution that what should be the wing area and what should be the method of controlling because they had seen in their wind box that when the wing is warped in any direction then it helps you in turning and as a result of that they decided that if any aircraft is to fly properly then the control surfaces will be required and those control surfaces nowadays are cut separately but in those days the Wright brothers thought that by changing the angle of the tips of the wing that would be possible and they accordingly designed the mechanism for that in 1901 they made a couple of gliders of that design they flew them on the string they were the real scale gliders that means the large gliders but they didn't sit in that that was the advice given to them by Octave Chenute. He said that if at all you want to make the attempts at flying, don't risk your life unless you are pretty sure that your contraption is capable of flying. And they took that advice. So in 1901, they flew the gliders on the threads. When they were satisfied with those trials, they put the equivalent weight, something about 80-85 kilograms of the weight in that and then flew those gliders those tests were also successful and finally in 
1902 they started the development of the engine the reason was very obvious any engine on the automobile was too heavy so they wanted to get rid of many things the first thing was the water jacket which is used for the cooling on the automobile engines they wanted the engine to be air cooled just like our motorcycle engines so they wanted the engine to be air cooled and such type of the engine didn't exist so there was only one solution that <coughs> the right brothers themselves should develop this engine and you will be surprised at the skill of the right brothers that they did develop the engine out of the aluminum casting and the aluminum metal the engine was capable of giving 16 bhp 16 brake horse power at the start and since it was air cooled it would lose the efficiency to 12 horse power within a minute or so now how much powerful is this if you are riding the motorcycle or scooter see the scooter or motorcycle manual they will say that your motorcycle has got something about 25 bhp 40 bhp 35 bhp that means your motorcycle engines presently are more powerful than the right brothers engine of just 16 bhp brake horse power that they had developed in those days so they designed the engine also and with all that contraption they completed their aircraft <coughs> in the year of 1903 and in the 1903 on the day of december 17 17 december 1903 they uh, set up for the flight previously a few weeks before that they did all the testing then they realized that the aircraft will not run on the ground because the land that they had selected was not having any hard runway or anything like that it was a sandy land so that is why the aircraft wouldn't run at the high speed so they developed the wooden rails on which the aircraft would slide and then the aircraft was kept on those sliding rails the engine was turned on and the orville right first to uh, try the flight but before the sufficient speed was gained he lifted the aircraft up in the air which immediately went up and stalled and could not cruise but it safely came down a few breakage here and there was there which was repaired within a few hours and late afternoon the wilbur right again took up the trial he allowed the aircraft to run until up to the end of the rail when by that time the sufficient speed was gained and very lightly he lifted the elevator and the aircraft gracefully took up in the air cruised through the air just for about 120 feet and after that safely landed with the engine completely on and the first powered flight became successful on december 17 1903 so all the efforts of right brothers came to <coughs> the reality the news flashed all over the world whatever the photographs were uh, photography was available some photos were there videos etc was not possible at that time of course but the photographs were available and the right brothers became the first in the world to make a real powered flight and that is why right brothers name is always taken whenever the aircraft is thought of everybody says that right brody uh, right brothers invented the aircraft but that is not true aircraft was invented well before them but the powered flight was a very difficult speed breaker to cross and that is why the that particular barrier was crossed by the right brothers for the first time and uh, that is the credit uh, to be given to their skills because not only they constructed the aircraft they also constructed the engine and they also constructed the perfect propellers for that uh, let me tell you that the efficiency of the right propellers has been calculated and the present propellers which are designed on the computer with all the advanced technology are just about a couple of percent more efficient than the right brothers propeller so you can see that in those days by hand crafting such perfect propellers is not a easy thing 
they were highly highly skilled people and they deserved this type of the honor so that is the story of the right brothers well uh, inspired by such stories i wrote the books pioneer planes or in marathi sahasi vimane in which i have given the static model of right brothers this is how it looked this was the model of the uh, model of the right brothers aircraft the flyer one so it was a biplane it had the elevator and the stabilizer in the front and the rudder was on the rear side the wings could be twisted in this manner so this was the mechanism of twisting of the aircraft wings that was developed by the right brothers and this model also is that flexible of course it's difficult to fly such type of the models but uh, uh, you will enjoy making such models so that is how is the story of right brothers what we should learn from it is that the amount of efforts one has to put in to get to the pinnacle of the success thank you for books by mr madhav khare visit www.jotsnaprakashan.com for many other products from paper gliders up to remote control planes exhibitions workshops lectures etc write to elerios.aeroclub@gmail.com or kharemg@gmail.com